Hello and in today's STM32 programming we are going to be making a very simple bootloader. Alright now for the code I have a very basic setup over here so effectively this is just the exact same thing as the blink tutorial we are just not initializing anything so the code's already generated for it so effectively it's just the whole sys configuration and initializing the GPIO. Actually anything in here does not really matter for that and then additionally i have an blinky application from the bootloader it's going to jump to the blinking application first things first we are going to create a function in our main and we're going to call that void bootloader and that's going to be say enter so this is going to be our entry point for the bootloader now this is specific to c we build this application we'll see in our debug debug file we'll generate a dot map file which is the same as the project name we open this map file and we just copy the bootloader entry point and search for that you'll see it appends the name of the function with z16 this is what we call name mangling and this is effectively what enables you to do function overloads and virtual functions in c++ we want to change this so that it generates the exact name as our function so how we achieve this is by saying x turn and we say c this marks it as a c function and then it cannot be name mangled so you can't use function overloading with this particular name now anymore i believe i'm not 100 sure on that so if we generate our function let's just rebuild that open our map file again just reload it you can see it changed to the exact name that we put our function as and this will generate in the .txt area but that's not too important where it places the function in this function I'm going to put in a underscore not so this is just so that I can place a breakpoint in this function the next thing we go is we go to the startup folder and you'll find a assembly file in the startup folder nothing too complex in this assembly so effectively what this does is it's your boot code so where your application will start from the area you will be looking for is the system in it this libc in it array main and this bxrl so system initialize this is also a function that's called go in your source folder and system.stm32 we can just copy that function you can see it is called here this is before you enter main then we have the bl instruction which is just a branch and then then we branch into main which will go to your main.cpp file technically this extend c is supposed to be here but i believe the compiler marks main as a special function that cannot be name mangled so our bl main system initialize we initialize all the globals with this libc and then we want to add a function and this is going to be bl bootloader enter so we can place a breakpoint over here by the system initialization and and then bootloader main and then we can see it over here as well so let's start the debugging process um proceed okay not does not exist this is the double underscore there we go okay then we can debug okay now you can see we've hit the system initialization we can step over over and then if we step into this function you see it jumps over to the knob right and if we step over that we are back to the main and then if we place a breakpoint over here at the start of main and we step into main you can see it jumps over to the main function and then you would resume your normal function so we can just step over and then we go into our info loop so we can detach from that okay so now we are now we have a function that can maintain the bootloader so the next thing is we need to decide where do we want our application to start at for that we need to look at the flash map now i got this from the data sheet i covered this in the flash reads and writes so i'm not going to repeat it here every one of these blocks are a page so you want your application to start on a specific page and for this one i'm going to select page 20 which 
which starts at 8005000 hex. So we just copy that value. Okay, then we store that. And now this will also determine how big your bootloader can be. This is the end of your bootloader application. So any storage or whatnot you need for your bootloader, if you need any storage at all, will have to be placed before this, or you need a shared partition if you're doing storage, but all your code will have to fit in from the starting address to this address. So your entire bootloader will be has to be contained within this space. To make the adjustment for this, we go to our linker file. So this LD file, and we simply just scroll down and let me just double check how many kilobytes that is. 5000 hex is five kilobytes. This length parameter determines the size of what your application can be. So we're simply going to adjust this to five kilobytes. No, I lie. That's going to be 20 kilobytes. So I'm giving it only 20 kilobytes of flash and I allow it to access the entire RAM. So if we save and we build, you can see the flash size changed here from 64K to 20k so now we are basically set up for our flash size we go back to main function we can delete this not now then the first thing we place in our bootloader entry point is we say you in 32 and we're going to call this application addr and that's going to be equals to where we want to jump to into the flash then the next thing we want to add is underscore io and that will also be a un32 of pointer and we want to call this vec table or the vector table and then we want to do a cast of underscore io and then un32 star of application address so what we're doing is we are getting the contents. I need to add a zero X in front of that. We are getting the contents of this flash address. Then we want to create a type def. So we're creating a function pointer now Avoid, And we're going to say call this jump underscore app and it's going to take in void parameters and score okay now we have a function pointer and we call this app jump equals to the address we just got now plus one and we want the pointer of that and we just do a type cast so now our function pointer is set up. So this is where we are going to jump to from the bootloader. Now we need to set the vector table offset register. So that's going to be a direct call to the registers. So this is going to be SCP and we are pointing to the vector table offset register. And that's simply going to be our address application. So this changes your where your vector tables are offset to. And then simply we do a application jump so this function pointer that we created here and we gave it a value we're offsetting it by one un32 and we're taking value of it we'll have a look at this when we do the debugging and then we set the entire vector table offset and then we jump so let's have a look at this in debug okay we system initialize i'm going to take away these ones okay. then we go to our bootloader entry we step into that and we can see here in our expressions the application address the vec table the vec table plus one number format and we want to see SV vort so our vort offset is zero we can see our application address as what we set it to here unfortunately i can't make this much bigger so tough cookies then we can see our vec table is a bit copy of application other so it's the same actually as the application address and then the pointer of our vec table points to this location so this is actually where your application is going to start and then we can see the vector table offset register is currently zero so if we step over we'll see that change let's change that to hex and that's not all the same so technically this is a lot of duplicate data but it's just easier to read now we are going to jump from our bootloader to the application but currently there is no application flashed onto the stm so it's going to crash uh, if i step into this function i was mistaken previous testing there is an application still on the stm3 i just need to erase the stm so i'm just going to use the secret jailing flashlight and just erase the chip now we can quickly debug again so let's try that again we bootload into we step over you can see the variables changing we step into and then we jump to on the side here you can see single threaded we jump into no man's land now you can add recovery but that's beyond the scope 
scope of this video. This is just jumping from one application to another one. So we can stop debugging. Now for the application. So I've set up this Blink app, which is exactly the same as the Blinky code. Very simple, just runs a few LEDs. For this, we need to go into your system and then we need to look for our vector table offset tab. So this is where your bootloader is going to be located. So we take the, oh, not your bootloader. This is where your application will be. So we take this address that we have in the bootloader. We see it's one, two, three, it's 5,000 hex. And we simply replace this one. So that's 5,000 hex now. So our vector table offset. So the base address, it already adds the, 8 hex in front so it just makes it easier for you somewhere down below here they or the two actually right here it sets the vector table set base address here now we need to go into our linker now we are going to do it a little bit differently than for the bootloader where the bootloader we limited the size from the start of the flash now we are going to offset the start of the flash so we get our address again and we can simply paste that one in here so our application is now offset and from the bootloader flash linker we reserve 20k there so we need to subtract 20k from this as well so this is going to be 44k instead of the full 64k so now your application is also constrained to a certain amount of flash so we can quickly just select our blink app and we can build that you can see our size is limited to 44 kilobytes build that and now we have no method to put our application application onto the bootloader. Now STM has made this real easy for us. We don't need to fiddle around with the debugger too much. So from your bootloader project, you can right click, you can say debug as, and then you go to debug configuration. And now in your debug configuration, you can go to debugger, the startup tab. Where is it? Sources. Where is it? It's in here. Ah, there it is. So if you don't see the options, just extend this. Then here, we just simply say add, and then we select what we want to add to our application. So this is going to be app link. We want to perform the build. We want to download it and we want to load the symbols for it. First, we are going to run the bootloader ELF. So that's indicated by the arrow. And then we are also loading in the symbols for the Blink app. So we can just click apply here and then we can say close or debug. I'm going to debug immediately. So we're starting from the bootloader entry. We are going to step into that, step over, step over and now when we do let's actually place a breakpoint in our startup for the application we're going to set our breakpoint at the main before we enter the main back to the debugging interface then we step into this function let's just restart that okay bootloader main entry step into step over step over and now at our app jump we are going to step into and now you can see we are in the blink application startup code so if I allow this to run we are going to the main function we're going to step into that and you can see here we are running the blink code fantastic that's the basic entry to doing a bootloader some things to consider so the reason i have created this function that is booted from the startup elf is because i do not want to do a reverse initialization i intend to first check do i need to enter the bootloader or do i need to jump to my application there's multiple methods to do this doesn't matter really but the main Main intention here is nothing is initialized because we just started up the chip nothing's initialized it's only clocking now then we can decide if we want to jump to the main of the bootloader and initialize whatever we need for the bootloader or we can jump directly to the application this eliminates the need that you need to do reverse initialization. So effectively, if I say had a UART in here that's initialized, then my application is not using a UART or I had an Artos thread or anything running that I need to terminate before entering a new application, just flat out eliminates the need for it. Extra considerations to compile this code, you can go to properties and then settings. So your C++ build settings. So if you're working in C only, you only need to set 
this one. You can see here I set the optimization for size. This is preferable for bootloaders. You can set it to O2 or if you're just debugging the bootloader, dash G or none. But this is where you set your optimization. You tend to want your bootloader as small as possible so that you have more flash available for your application. And then if you're working in C++ like I am, you go to the G++ compiler. So you have to set both. And you also go to your optimization and you can also enable some of the extra stuff here maybe you don't need it this will determine the size so by default this was set up for size usually it's set up for dash none if we look at i set this to dash none and i compile this you can see the size increased of the bootloader so preferably when you're doing bootloaders you do it as dash s for your optimization and that's a short introduction to creating a super simplistic bootloader just to enter one application which is your bootloader and then jumping to a another application directly from your bootloader a like share comment and subscribe is always appreciated thank you have a nice day